Hi, I'm Gustavo Menezes. I'm 23 years old and I uh, race cars professionally. I started when I was five years old with my family coming from Brazil. Obviously, Santa was a big presence in everyone's life. He passed away in 94, I was born in 94, and my parents never watched motorsports again after he passed away. And two years later, I would turn on the TV and the only thing I could do is flip the channel to racing, and that's all I, all I ever wanted to do. Got a go-kart for my sixth birthday later on and uh, started racing in the regional and state championship, went to a national championship level, and I was able to tick off all the things I wanted in that bucket list, you know? And at one point, I hit a halt in that career, you know? I wanted to be a Formula One driver so bad, that was life, that was everything. But I didn't quite have the opportunity due to timing and luck and finance and everything else. It put me in an opportunity to drive in prototype at the time, LMP2, which is one level below where I'm at now. I drove it and I looked and I said, I can do this for the rest of my life. I, I don't mind, because this is incredible. Everything just turned around, you know? The smile came out and I was just like, this is the place I fit in. I perform at my best and I know, I know what I can do. Everything is still going well. We podiumed in every race we've done in, uh, in LMP1 in the World Championship this year. I'm in an incredibly fast car, so. I'm very blessed. Long way to the finish line, got a hard road ahead. Motorsports, it's such a big field of play. It's really difficult to, to explain to, to the average audience because we have one side of the spectrum in North America, which consists of NASCAR and IndyCar. Um, and of course, there's the dirt racing, there's rally car, rally cross, and all across the board over in Europe, the biggest kind of racing is obviously Formula One and the World Endurance Championship, which is where I'm in. Um, we have one of the biggest races in the world. It's part of the Triple Crown, we call it, and it's the 24 Hours of Le Mans. They say the three biggest races in the world and in history are Monaco Grand Prix, the Indianapolis 500, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I race in the, the prototypes in the World Endurance Championship. We tour across Europe, over into Asia, the Middle East, and uh, North America next year, adding a race to Brazil. I'm gonna light like fire. I'm coming down like rain. The 24 Hours of Le Mans is one of the most difficult events in the world. Uh, we have around 300,000 spectators at the event. We have 41 pit stops of perfection with the refueling tire stops hitting our marks. That's one side of the aspect. The second one, making zero mistakes as a driver. No contact, no offs, no breaking parts. No other cars turning down and hitting us because there's 60 cars on track. And uh, we're in the top category where we're doing around 340, 350 kilometers an hour. Um, and there's cars out there doing 290 at the same time. In the middle of the night, three in the morning in the rain, it can get very complicated very quick. At the end of the day, we always say, you don't win Le Mans, Le Mans gives it to you because through all that, you also need a little bit of luck and timing and talent and teamwork. And this year we were able to, to put it on the podium. I won it in 2016, so it's, uh, it's been great. So I race with a big uh, company called Rebellion, and they're supported by a company called Orica, and they manufacture our car for us. So it's a partnership between Rebellion and Orica, and it's called Rebellion Racing. Thank you guys so much for having us. Always a pleasure to talk about motorsports. I'm very grateful to be where I am today, and to share that with anyone, it's always incredible. So take care and thank you so much. Oh, no,